If you've been following this channel for a while, you're probably familiar with 3D flying. You might even consider yourself a 3D pilot, but get ready to take it up a notch. Ever heard of 4D aerobatics? No, it's not science fiction, it's the real deal. Where reverse thrust and thrust vectoring unlock a whole new set of maneuvers, like reverse spins and inverted hovers. Now, let me introduce you to Andres Leoni. He's not your average pilot. He's been pushing the boundaries of 4D flying, dedicating countless hours developing large-scale models capable of incredible 4D maneuvers previously reserved for smaller indoor foamies. But wait, there's more. Andres is also a key player at Hispano Aviation, a Spanish manufacturer of premium RC jets and UAVs that is engineering some seriously impressive airplanes, like the Ultimatum series and the unique Bull. In our chat, Andres takes us on a journey through his RC evolution, from precision and freestyle robotics to elite level competition in F3A and F3P. We'll dive into his fascination with 4D flying and how he's pushing the envelope with cutting edge aircraft. We also discuss his work at Hispano Aviation and talk about how the Spanish team is designing and manufacturing next double jets to bring modelers the best possible flying experience. All right, Andres. How are you doing? It's good to see you. Hello. Hello, Juan. Very nice to see you again. Very nice. Hey, it's been a while. Thank you so much for being uh, with us in the Skybound RC podcast. Oh, this is a, a honor and a pleasure for me to, to meet you again and uh, be a part of this uh, beautiful channel. Awesome. Uh, so we have, I think we have a lot of uh, interesting topics to talk about. Uh, I want to chat about yeah. um, 4D flying, I want to chat about jets, uh, Hispanavis and all the coolest stuff you've been doing. Uh, but for yeah. those people that don't know you yet, uh, maybe you can start by giving a quick intro uh, about yourself and about how you started uh, in, in RC, how you got started in the hobby. Yes, uh, well, this, uh, this came from my family, from my father's families and my grandfather. He started when he was 12 years old with uh, RC, uh, not, not RC, aeromodeling. This was a free flight era. And then uh, he gets on the RC in Argentina quite uh, early. My father uh, grew with this uh, passion of uh, aviation and aeromodeling, also with the manned aircraft. And I born it in the same. So I started with the aero modeling, building small aircraft when I was like uh, seven or eight years old, free flight models. Then I made control line uh, up to 12. And then uh, since uh, 13, I started with uh, radio control airplanes. Uh, I met you probably around 15, 16 years ago, maybe more. Um, and I, I think the first time I saw you, you were really like a great pilot, uh, really a skill in aerobatics, both precision and kind of freestyle, uh, aerobatics. Uh, how did you get started in, in that type of flying in that like kind of high performance aerobatic, uh, complicated type of flying? Well, I, my, uh, on the beginning when, when I was in Argentina, uh, I have a lot of, uh, grandfathers on in the aero modeling and uh i was uh and i am a huge fan of uh, kike somenzini so this was very inspirational for me when i saw the videos of him playing in the tournament of champion uh very little of f3a because on mm -hmm. that era it was hard to find some videos and this uh, mo this was my main motivation the wish to fly like Kike uh, makes, uh, he's, uh, he's still my idol because of his style, the way he flies. And uh, then uh, slowly I, I, I found uh, new great pilots and I want to follow them. Like, uh, for example, Sebastiano from Italy, Sebastiano Silvestri. This was another huge inspiration. And because of them, I think uh, I started to try fly as good as I can. Uh, one old man uh, told me that I should focus in the um, F3A because mm -hmm. uh, he explained it when I was uh, like uh, 14 years old. You must to fly something that people understand, that uh, they know what you try to do. And this will uh, show the difference between uh, if somebody is doing what the models want or if somebody is flying what he wants. 
So this, I think, was a very good school for me. And uh, since then, I never stopped at pattern flying style, even with jets, with F3S. Uh, and from since F3P, F3S and uh, Aero Musicals, uh, this is something also that I love. The connection between the music and uh, the stream maneuvers and slow maneuvers. So because this world of aerobatic is so big, uh, you never get uh, bored of it and you never uh, have enough. And uh, this is why I love so much. This is difficult. You never learn everything. Uh, even when you see fabulous pilots all around the world, like you, uh, you also uh, were very well watched by me when you started with the uh, Acro 3D videos. So because of that, um, I think this challenge is uh, beautiful to practice and keep on it. Yeah, no, I, I feel like I feel the same way. I think uh, I like airplanes, doesn't matter the style, I love every kind of airplane. But the thing that drives me always back to aerobatics is that big challenge, right? Like, um, both yeah. on the precision side of things, it's always possible to do it more precise, to do it better. And on the freestyle, extreme aerobatics, there's always new that you could try doing. You could do it lower, you could do it more aggressive, you could do it uh, more um, in tune to the music, if you have like music during your flight. Yeah. Like, there's always plenty of room for making things better, right? And, and challenging your, yourself. It's definitely fun. Yes, this, uh, what I like also is to see different styles. Because uh, it is true that today we have uh, these extreme aerobatics. Mm -hmm. I love the stream aerobatics. I think it is a very interesting um, way to fly. There is a lot of control needed. And uh, also there is a very talented people. Uh, for example, Jace is the, let's say the God in the world today with that style of flying. And, but I also like to see um, old style, let's say old style flying. Like uh, when you see um, I don't know, Kike or Sebastiano. I like a lot Gernot Brugman also. Mm -hmm. uh, he is uh, very precise with the music and with the maneuvers. And uh, so when you mix all of this and you try to copy them uh, in the way that you can, I think this uh, mix is uh, beautiful. Uh, each pilot have uh, one style. If, if I need to describe my style, I will say that it's a mix. I am not an extreme aerobatic pilot, but a precision pilot. But I like to play with the extreme aerobatics. So that mix makes a different fly. It's not the same like other pilot. It is like you, you have your own style. And uh, I like how you mix uh, because your, your experience with iMac and, and this. I think this makes each pilot and each flying beautiful. Yeah, it's definitely, especially when you go to either demo flights or freestyle flight, typical four minute freestyle with music. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very clear, different styles. Like sometimes if you see a video of somebody, uh, some of the top pilots and you don't even see their name, you probably start getting an idea of this like J style or this is more like a Brookman style, yeah. a bit more focused on precision. Uh, a bit more like maybe maybe trying to pay a bit more attention to make sure that the airplane is like really really flying with the music rather than music on the background. Um, it's definitely yeah. interesting to see to see that. I think that's also what makes judging some of those competitions very challenging because sometimes two very different styles can be very difficult to fly, can be very pleasing to the to the spectators, but still like it's hard to 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 put one on top of the other. Yes, uh, I agree. I think that judges have a uh, very hard work, uh, mm -hmm. even when the criteria is uh, very well defined on any mm -hmm. competition. Let's say uh, aeromusical competition, you have a very clear criteria, but mm -hmm. uh, we back to the same. There is a different pilot, different person and different uh, flying style. So in my opinion, for example, in USA, uh, from what I saw on the videos and uh, guys from there, uh, the style uh, that uh, get the victory is the style where you have something very spectacular. Mm -hmm. Even when it is not 
perfect flight is not just perfect with music or not perfect maneuver. Maybe there is one and eight uh, snap roll and the idea was one and a half, but mm -hmm. doesn't matter. This was spectacular because this was fast, uh, low and low. And in Europe, I think uh, if you see Sasha or Gernot, they are uh, very, very precise. Mm -hmm. So they focus more on the precision than show. Yeah. So if you see, there is not a criteria where you will say you must to put more points for show or uh, precision. Well, yes, precision is on points, but how can you judge this? It is very difficult above all when, with such great pilots it, they are mm. all great and they this will be very strange that they will be make a big mistake mm -hmm. so in my opinion this is very fun if you will get in the top five of any of international competition you are you can feel very proud of yourself yeah. because you made the great so you did a lot of F3A flying. I, I think I remember even seeing you doing some like European competitions, right? When you were already yes. living in, in Spain. Uh, yes. You did also some F3P, right? Like some indoor aerobatics yeah. competitions. Yes, I I started in 2005 with the F3P. Also the category on that era was very new. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, this category here in uh, in Europe, we make uh, F3P and uh, F3P AM or Aero Musicals. Mm -hmm. This was from the beginning. Uh, today is more or less the same, but they are like uh, more separate. The the, fo the main focus today is put it on uh, F3P. Aero Musical is not so popular. I think uh, today is hard to get good uh, competitive level with the new 4D models with extremely hard uh, um, routines, uh, extremely skilled pilots. So get inside that is quite hard. And normally it's also difficult to get some place to make training. Mm -hmm. So I started with F3P and uh, I flew competition F3P from 2005 up to 2015. This was my last uh, F3P competition in the World Championship in Poland. So also I went to Dubai for a F6B competition, Aero Musical. And this was an invitational um, event. This was beautiful. This was held in the Burj Khalifa. And we can make a very good promotion of this category on that uh, on that place. And also uh, flew F3A, uh, Aero Musical with two meters, uh, F6A models. And then I started with jets, uh, with the uh, raw import. Uh, we started to fly uh, jets and we started to practice F3S, a pattern aerobatics with uh, turbine. And this I love immediately because this mix, uh, what is nice of pattern, precision, position, control of uh, the place. And also you can uh, fly jet. They are heavier than F3A. And when there is a lot of wind, they will not blow so much. So this is very fun also. Yeah. Um, so you're talking about um, F3P and the aeromusical version of F3P and how it's getting pretty hard to get into the top pilots like the, the the skill level is very high and on top of it now with uh and I, I think that's something i've always seen with um our musical routines like freestyle in comparison to the pattern like pattern i think the progression is a bit more straightforward right you have like all this um you know the the, the basic the sportsman the advanced the unlimited like it's very it's it's fairly uh beginner friendly you don't get super intimidated yeah. because you are not flying like Kiko Somencini on day one, right? Yeah. Nobody, nobody is doing that. Uh, no. But I think with the freestyle, I think it's usually a bit more intimidating because the references are like, you know, flying really aggressive, really low to the ground. Uh, you have the additional complexity of making your own routine, which is not, dif not, not easy. And you have to later practice that routine with music. It's a lot of complexity. Uh, but one of the things that is interesting with uh, indoor freestyle is that for a while now we've seen this 4D additional component to the flying. Uh, I know that a lot of yeah. people are familiar with 3D flying, 
Uh, can you explain a bit what 4D flying means? Yeah, 4D is, uh, let's say, uh, have a reverse uh, um, direction or a reverse thrust of motor mm -hmm. uh, during flying. This means that uh, you have a propeller that can uh, run uh, forward like uh, any uh, 3D model. And in 4D, you have a system that can change the pitch in order to make a backward uh, uh, thrust and also you have a vector uh, control system which leaves you to control uh, and vector the the thrust so this is very interesting the 4d the first 4d flyer in the world that was um, that make a break point and game changer in my opinion was martin muller a German, a great friend. He's uh, all, he also inspired me a lot. When uh, the first time I saw him flying and in Turin, in Italy, this uh, when this came, this completely changed the game. Uh, you can be great uh, 3D flyer, but when there appeared the negative torque roll, the TikToks, uh, the reverse flips, um, this also the spins on reverse this changed the the way of judges will see the the competition and also all the spectators because even if the flight was not um, so aggressive like uh, for example donatas pausolis on that on that time uh, martin was less aggressive than donatas but when he made the first negative torque roll close to the ground, this killed the competition. Yeah, nobody has so, ever seen that before. Like it's it's hard to no. compete against that. Yeah. Uh, so this, in my opinion, this make a point in, in indoor. Obviously, after that, all of us try to make uh, as good as Martin Muller, and this takes a lot of years to understand because uh, I remember that I spent like three, four years every winter time building models building bpp models crashing them immediately back again to the workshop again make another model this was a lot of work yes it is very difficult very difficult on that time it was even harder because you didn't find information on internet about what about transmitter adjustment what about incidence of motor to make it right uh, how should i assemble the system the system came completely disassembled and there was few pictures already assembled so you need mm -hmm. to figure out okay i should screw something in somewhere and that's it you know and uh, <laughs> yeah. this was quite hard and today for example, with, with T motor with 4D BPP system, they have a fixed uh, propeller, symmetric propeller with a re reverse ESC, which is phenomenal. So anybody can assemble standard system, standard in terms of motor, propeller, ESC. That's it, and you will have reverse thrust, and this works amazing, good, very good, very simple, very light so and with great performance so this changed it a lot is the um t-motor version like how, how does it work like what's the state of the art nowadays what's the t-motor setup look like like do you still have yeah. i remember many many years ago you would have like a separate servo to control the pitch of the of the propeller and yes. that look super sketchy is that still what what yeah. people do nowadays or Today you have, uh, let's say, uh, competition pilots still flying the the Mamo upside down system. This was Mamo mm -hmm. upside down system. Uh, this was a small servo in the in the noose, connected to the pitch control of the system. Very fragile system. You cannot you cannot hit anything with that. And in the moment that you touch anything, this will explode like. Like, you know, like, like a bomb. So mm -hmm. everything will be destroyed. Model, motor, system, even the gym where you fly in will be destroyed because this was really a pain to fly with that. Mm -hmm. Today with T-Motor, for example, there is a, 
other brands that are doing, but T Motor have a very good combo. They have a ESC 4D uh, with a small button, so you can fly a standard 3D. This is like a normal ESC. And if you hit that small button on the ESC, the ESC will work from the middle of range of uh, throttle stick to up will be uh, forward flying from the middle to bottom. This will be reverse flying. So, so but it's not it's not making simple. any changes on the propeller, right? You're just uh, changing the direction, the no. spin direction. Yeah. So the propeller is symmetric. So you have uh, on both sides of propeller a leading edge and trailing edge. Interesting. And this is very well developed because it's, it's not noisy, very well balanced. They have a plastic version, which is great for uh, beginners to learn to crash because this is much cheaper to crash. This is connected with, uh, with uh, one uh, nut on the plastic propeller. And they have also, uh, let's say, pro version with carbon fiber propeller. The propeller is 1.4 grams, eight wow. inch propeller. So this is unbelievable good. The speed of uh, change duration is unbelievable. And this works fantastic. I can say very similar or the same like a BPP system, variable pitch system. So today, anybody who wants to fly 4D to try, it is cheaper and by far faster, very fast. Yeah, it seems like it's bringing the complexity from um, the, the propeller system with variable pitch. It brings the complexity into the ESC and T-Motor has yeah. that figured out and you don't have to worry about, about that type of problem anymore. That, yeah, that's, that's yeah. nice. I assume also the weight of the system also goes way down. Uh, I assume that having like an extra servo and some linkages yeah. um, was not the greatest for, for like this type of super lightweight airframes, right? That you fly indoors. Yes, uh, we have uh, two minutes uh, route time normally. Mm -hmm. So even to get these two minutes in a big hole, when, when you have a lot of uh, throttle input, uh, you, need, you need to think also on the battery. The battery mm -hmm. should be very powerful, but light. And the model should be light. Otherwise, this will not fly good inside a hole or a mall. So uh, on that era, it was hard to, to, to get a model, 3D model or 4D model, model below 170 or 180 grams. This was mm. a huge challenge because your competitor with a 3D model can have uh, 140, 150 grams easily with much less complexity. And he will go to fly. The 4D pilot on the beginning will go to suffer quite a lot until he understand about this. I will recommend uh, use this uh, T-Motor uh, system and go to practice outdoor. On the beginning, put limit the power to maximum 50%, uh, even when you don't have enough power to make negative torque, it doesn't matter. This will train your brain to understand that you need to always come back to the center to mm -hmm. have a zero, zero power. Yeah, that's a very different mindset. Uh, like it's, it's basically what 3D helicopter pilots do, I believe, right? Like they, they have something similar to that. Um, so yeah, 4D is pretty cool. I never had a chance to try that yet. It would be interesting to try that someday. Uh, <laughs> but I think one interesting thing that I've seen pretty much nobody other than you, I'm, I'm sure that there is somebody else out there, but I've only seen you doing this. I've seen you flying a not a foamy anymore, not a little lightweight indoor plane doing 4D maneuvers, but actually like a relatively large size uh, plane uh, doing 4D and, and doing it pretty well too, like with some like reverse torque rolls, fairly low to the ground. Um, that looked crazy. Can you, can you tell us a bit about, uh, about that? Yes, this, uh, since the uh, indoor uh, madness of 4D, I was uh, I was dreaming about uh, make uh, something similar with a big aircraft, bigger aircraft, and of course outdoor. Uh, so when I learned uh, indoor flying, I decided to make a standard 3D model, 
with a 4D system invented by me. So I take a bigger motor, bigger ESC on a 78 inches uh, aircraft. This was a Sukhoi from Sevart. And uh, I started to play with uh, uh, pitch system, propeller, uh, helicopter blades, servos, and a lot of things. On the beginning, this was, this was looking like quite easy, let's say, because I was like, okay, this have a forward uh, and back. This is working good. So why not to fly? So I go to, airfield, to the airfield and uh, take off. And then I started to discover what will uh, crash a lot of time up to today, because when you see the symmetric propeller on the 4D models, they have a very little uh, angle of incidence mm -hmm. uh, because of course the airfoil is symmetric and this will uh, make a uh, produce sustentation and uh, lift up to 14 degrees angle. If you will come to 16 or 70 degrees of angle, this will not produce lift anymore. This, this will stall immediately. Mm -hmm. There will occur a very strange noise. And when you are going to 15 or, or 14 or 15 degrees of pitch, the model on, even on full throttle will not run. You, this will look like a very slow pattern aircraft mm -hmm. with no speed. So this takes a lot of time to develop a new propeller. This looks more, the shape looks more like a propeller, but of course this didn't, this didn't have a torsion and this have a symmetric airfoil. So this doesn't work the same like a standard propeller. In the end, I made a model for the system. I didn't make the system for the model. So I made this uh, F3A looking model, the Infinity. Mm -hmm. uh, this was my best model on 4D. It was because already this made a hard landing. And uh, this model was made only for this system. Like everything weighed very little. Wing panel was like 190 grams. This is extremely light. F3 was it uh, balsa construction or what, what type of yes. construction was it? This was balsa. Uh, I need to make the stabilizer, the rudder, fuselage. I buy it one fuselage of fiberglass, but the lightest and the bigger possible to put the system inside. And everything was balsa except special points where I need to put a uh, plywood or carbon fiber, for example, mm -hmm. uh, all the system support and all what is the system of 4D is aluminum and uh, carbon fiber. Uh, this is very hard because you need to make your own pieces, your own propeller, everything should be done by yourself. And this rotates to 7,000 or 7,500 RPM. So it is not a show. It is quite dangerous mm -hmm. and this should be uh, done uh, very careful and precise. Uh, so this model flew better because I prepared the model for the system with my previous experience. Uh, today, uh, last year, I started to develop a new idea, trying to solve the problem of speed and also the problem of uh, power. Uh, my idea is to have a system that you will feel almost the same like 3D model, but 4D. Hmm. This is my main goal now. This is taking really a lot of time, but uh, I dream with that model. I think that uh, the day that this model will work, uh, this will also be beautiful to share with others uh, this experience. So I am working uh, well with 4D outdoor model since 2011. So this is a, a lot of time already. That sounds really, really challenging. But I would say yeah. that after seeing some of those videos and, and the work you've done with the Sukhoi and then with the Infinity, it feels like you are 80% there. Like it feels like the most challenging 
Uh, some of the more challenging aspects you've already covered, and now you're at the point where you can just optimize to make the flying better, to make the construction easier, to make it, uh, I don't know, more more user friendly, I guess, right? And and less yeah. less of a one at a kind. Um, that's mm. really cool. Yeah, uh, my idea now is to to make a standard 3D model, like mm -hmm. I don't know, pilot or extreme flight or sky wind model. A two meter wingspan, 78 mm -hmm. inches, that will fly 95% the same like 3D, mm -hmm. but with the possibility of make uh, negative maneuvers. So uh, this will be very, very fun. I don't know when I will get it. I already made some tests uh, the last year with new concept and this worked very good, but the control of this new system is very hard. So I need to learn much more things. Would would that still be using the same concept as the T motor for the setup, where it's a symmetric propeller and the ESC reverse direction, or would it be a, um, a change of pitch uh, type of mindset? Uh, I, I uh, unfortunately, when when you are on on such stuff, you need to try everything. And I already made tests with uh, reverse propeller. Mm -hmm. I simply modified a good propeller, a carbon fiber propeller, in order to have a more or less a symmetric airfoil. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the results were not uh, very good on this five or six kilograms model where you need at least 12 kilograms of, of power. So um, result was not very good with this uh, big model. And I follow with the variable pitch system because mm -hmm. the, this is more efficient. Yeah, I guess that when you need that much thrust for these bigger planes, when you go the route of the symmetric propeller, you're compromising too much and you don't get enough of a, enough efficiency in the system, right? You're not able to produce enough thrust on either direction. Yeah, the, the, let's say a good propeller with, uh, let's say, five uh, kilowatts power motor, uh, good motor, and good ESC, good batteries. Um, you will get like around uh, 14 to 15 kilograms of thrust um, with a standard propeller, normal 2210 carbon fiber propeller. Um, okay, when you make, start to make it symmetric, or more or less symmetric, not exactly symmetric, you will get like 12 kilograms forward, but seven and a half backward. And this is not enough. Okay, forward with 12 kilograms, you can fly very good on, on a six kilograms model, mm -hmm. but seven or eight kilograms backward is not enough. When you put on reverse the propeller, And you say, okay, now I have seven kilograms forward and 12 kilograms backward. Oh, backward is fantastic, but forward is horrible. You have no power to make, not even standard 3D. So you can forget about the stream aerobatics with this. Mm -hmm. yep. So this way I need to stop uh, immediately and follow with uh, variable pitch propeller because uh, I also burned one ESC on change of direction this yeah. is that's extremely... pretty hard on the electronics yeah yeah, yeah 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 too much mass rotating 50 grams propeller rotating in one direction and then you put full negative and then yeah. explosion occur yeah. again so yeah. it is quite imagine. hard um do you have any recommendations for people um interested in getting started on some 40 flying uh i mind that some kind of like small foamy indoor uh, would be the way to go there. I think uh, the best is to start with the indoor models. There are a lot of models on the market, uh, standard 3D models, any of them that you like to fly. And I will recommend with the uh, go with the motor system, assemble them uh, without a vector uh, system. It is easier to make on the beginning fixed motor like a normal model and start to learn how to control the, the different uh, push of motor. And since then, go to 
vector system, learn how to control the reverse thrust and uh, also the opposite correction of rudder, uh, let's say jaw. And uh, since then, you can go and do whatever you want. When you learn the, the basic of uh, control, it is extremely fun. So fun that it is hard back to 3D. Mm -hmm. When you control 4D and you learn to make the negative torque and the flips and stuff like this, it is very hard to back to 3D. It is beautiful. The 3D and the stream aerobatic is beautiful. But you will always miss this negative touch. So I obviously recommend everybody uh, get on this world because now it's easier and beautiful. When you are doing those, like, how do you call it? Reverse torque roll? I feel like that's probably one of the most iconic maneuvers I can think of uh, when thinking of 4D, right? Like that's something so... I don't know, so different from anything else that, that you can say, like, you know, you can do a spin or reverse spin, but they look similar enough. The reverse yeah. torque roll with the nose pointing down, that's strikingly different. That's <laughs> super impressive. How do you even control, like, for example, on the on your Infinity, on the big planes, I assume you don't have uh, thrust vectoring, right? I have. I oh, have you do? thrust okay. vectoring. Yeah, yeah, this is... Uh, I will say that on the outdoor models, on the big models, it is more important to have a thrust vector be mm. because of the control. Uh, one of the things that uh, I discovered is that indoor experience helped me a lot to make an automatic uh, control of throttle, mm -hmm. but the control of model by himself, the style uh, or the way to control the maneuvers was completely different to indoor. I need to relearn um, the negative torque. I control easy the negative torque with indoors. And then when I get on these uh, big models, I need to learn a new way how to control this uh, big uh, inertia, a slower um, braking effect of propeller, a stall occur sometimes. So you need to prevent the stall because when you are going down, downside, the propeller is receiving air mm -hmm. and she's trying to push in the other direction. Mm -hmm. This means that uh, your relative incidence is bigger than what it actually is. Mm -hmm. So the propeller stalls immediately when you start. So you need to learn how to start the maneuver. When you break enough the model, control it on vertical and follow a sequence and a method in order to get a good maneuver, even on windy conditions, because windy conditions was very hard to me. Always that I get on the maneuver model will turn and flip and go out. So this takes a lot, but after a long, long practice, I learned to control vector system, vector uh, uh, of motor. So I can change the, the direction of fuselage with vector, but it must to be reversed, um, reverse correction. Mm -hmm. So normally when you will uh, correct right, you will move the nose right. But when you move right on vector system with negative, the, the nose will go left. Mm -hmm. So this was the hardest point, but this is possible to learn. Yeah. Yeah. And I assume a lot of this has to be trial and error uh, many, many times because, I mean, that's the same with anything you learn in life. But I think this in particular, I don't think that I've seen many resources out there. I don't think I've seen many tutorials about how to do a reverse uh, torque roll or a reverse spin, right? So I think a lot of this will have to be uh, you going to the field, going to your indoor place and, and trying things until you you figure out how to, how to make it happen. Yes, I think that it can be very interesting to make some uh, videos about, mm -hmm. uh, about that with indoor models, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. Because I think the 4D can be very popular, very, very popular above all, because today on these days you found uh, good products and very cheap, much cheaper than before, and they work. So I think that this can be very popular uh, above all on the, on the kids, because they can learn the same, the 3D or 4D, they, for them will be the same to mm -hmm. learn. So I think that this will be a very good way to, let's say, start if you are uh, 15 or 16 years old 
Uh, this doesn't matter. You can already learn to fly with the center stick. And I think it is, it can be very interesting to, to make some videos of that. Yeah. Well, um, I want to switch gears. Um, let's talk a bit about the, those videos that you have uh, behind you. Uh, let's talk about Jets and, and your involvement with uh, Hispano Aviation. Uh, can you talk with maybe about, you know, Hispano Aviation as the company, how that started, and also about your role within the company? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Hispano Aviation is a jet uh, model uh, company from Spain. I am the, the pilot and collaborator of this company. And uh, Hispano Aviation is in, on the market since uh, 2018. RC as an industry as a whole is not like the most um, obvious choice for somebody to start a company in order to make money. So for sure here, there's a big amount of like passion behind the idea of, hey, let's let's make a, a company to, to build RC planes or to build RC jets. Um, but on top of that, there is also a bunch of uh, different RC companies with a good number of um, RC jet manufacturers. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to hear what was the original intention in terms of, okay, let's, let's build this type of jet that maybe we see this like gap in the market or we think that we can do something different or something better than other companies. Mm. Can you speak a bit about that? Yes. Uh, on the beginning, the Hispano Aviation uh, want to make uh, uh, RC jets uh, in Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, this was uh, this is the first curiosity because it is quite uh, difficult to find manufacturers in Europe uh, of uh, of that kind of models. There exist some of them. But uh, it is true that uh, today, uh, let's say 90% of models in the world of jets or anything are made in Asia, in China or Thailand. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea born it because uh, I worked with the UAB companies in the past. And now I am collaborator with some of these uh, companies. And um, Roberto, uh, who is the owner of Hispano Aviación, have the opportunity to get uh, these models, the, the molds, and he wants to start with uh, jets uh, manufacturing here in, in Spain. And he wants to make a product uh, to feel proud of. So he also was pushed because of passion. Uh, he uh, he was making uh, importation of uh, jets in Spain uh, since uh, 2010, and he knows very good, uh, let's say, different brands of jets, uh, different quality, different style of jets, and he was looking for something, um, let's say, different, even when it is hard to make it, but uh, he wants something uh, special. Uh, so because of that, because of this wish to make something special, uh, this company started. What was the first um, design from Hispan Aviation? Hispan Aviation uh, buys uh, molds to another company that was uh, before in Spain. And uh, with these molds, start to uh, modify and adapt them to the idea and criteria of Hispano Aviation. So the first models are uh, Ultimatum, which is this uh, orange one here, and the uh, Bulmo one, and this one here. So the, the first, uh, let's say, work made on, on this model was change the mass distribution. Uh, one of the big problems we found on the different brands of uh, jets, even on the beginning with with these two models uh, was that the engineering of uh, layout of uh, all the skins were not thinking about uh, the mass distribution, the correct mass distribution. Mm -hmm. So this was the first part that the Hispano looked for to have a very easy to control aircraft, uh, reducing to the maximum the mass on the on the extreme areas of aircraft, on the wings and also on the fuselage, very important, in order to have a better pitch control, more stable pitch control. We found in some models that when you have, for example, tail heavy aircraft, you say, okay, I can put uh, 
all the batteries in the news. So I will balance the model and will get the correct point of center of gravity. Mm -hmm. Yes, this in on theory is okay, but the mass distribution is not correct. You need to, to have maximum weight on the center, on the middle of the aircraft in order to have a very easy control of pitch, jaw and roll. Uh, this uh, will help to reduce the inertia and the control will be much, much easier. Yeah, like when you are not moving, center of gravity is the only thing you care about. When you start moving in 3D, um, that mass distribution makes a, makes a big difference on, on inertia and the dynamics of the, of the flight. Yes, this was the, the first step. Now we are, uh, we are uh, making a development of a big, uh, uh, bigger ultimatum. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be uh, uh, U3.0. And this will be developed with new uh, aerodynamics. Uh, we are trying to improve the, the air intake, but, no, but on a different way to what is uh, uh, normally in the standard jet. So we are working on that. We plan to make it uh, during this year and make the first test uh, during the, this year. So we are working on that one, but meanwhile, we have also the, the bull, which is quite a strange model because uh, the air intake is already very different to standard mm -hmm. sport. Um, the main uh, air intake uh, on the beginning was the, the noose air intake. And uh, we, we discovered that this uh, was uh, a little bit too small for the bigger turbines, like uh, 20 kilos turbine or something like that. So we add uh, NACA uh, air intakes on the sides, but also a very big one on the bottom side. Uh, so this will bring uh, enough air on every position of model. If you have uh, air intake only on the top, when you will make positive maneuvers, lift will suck the air to the air intake. Mm -hmm. So you need to have some something on the bottom, uh, even if if you have a big, big air intake, it, it can be very dangerous because the lift will um, drastically suck the, the suction of the turbine because the lift is, can be more powerful than the, the power of the turbine, the compressor of turbine. So we are working on this analysis to bring different points of air intake in order to keep always a good airflow to turbine on different position while you are uh, rolling or uh, you are on knife edge flying. It is very important to have uh, control on air intakes because this um, affects a lot to the turbine performance. If turbine doesn't uh, get enough air to compress, uh, performance of turbine will be drastically um, reduced. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are looking to make a better um, uh, airflow to the turbine and also better exit of hot air on the on the aircraft on the fuselage. So we are working on that and also mass mass distribution. And this is uh, how uh, development starts with the idea of okay, we want that this flies good, but also the everything, all the details are taken care. Um, so I guess we have. The Ultimatum 2.0, that's the that's the one you have there. Um, and that's a, what's that, yeah. like a two meter? Yeah, two by two. Okay. It's quite square, um, uh, very fast and uh, fast model, very fast and precise model. Mm -hmm. It is uh, for all the pilots who likes the speed and adrenaline, this is the right model. Mm -hmm. uh, very fast. The kit is, is very light. Uh, actually, full frame like it is now uh, can come in around uh, four point five kilograms uh, with uh, wing wing uh, tube and everything, not fuel tank. Mm -hmm. So the frame is very light, uh, very strong and solid on the let's say the center of the model where uh, you connect the wing and mm -hmm. uh, you have a center of mass there, and very light on the tips. And this model is, uh, let's say, pattern style, a uh, high speed pattern style, very fast, very good knife edge uh, capability, 
which is not uh, very normal. You can have very fast model, but zero knife yeah. edge. This have a very good knife edge flying, very good roll and uh, beautiful pattern style flying. Uh, so this is with the Ultimatum 2.0. What uh, uh, what turbine would you recommend? What what turbine size would you recommend using for that for that uh, ultimate two? I will recommend from ten to sixteen. Uh, if you want a rocket, sixteen is fantastic. There is some people that also put a uh, eighteen inside of it, so it is really a rocket, and the frame holds very good. Uh, but if you want something. Uh, which will be anyway very fast, but easier to land. Uh, I will recommend go to 10 kilograms uh, mm -hmm. turbine. It will be a little bit. Uh, you will have a little bit less residual thrust, and this will help a lot on the on the landing. Well, for example, somebody trying to do like some um, F3s, some pressure robotics, maybe like a 14, 16 would be um, a good a good size. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the model uh, complete uh, complete kit, let's say, uh, dry will be like uh, 10 or 10 and a half kilograms. Mm -hmm. And uh, wet can be like, uh, depends on the quantity of fuel, but this can be 12 and a half, more or less. So, yes, if you have a 14 kilograms turbine, you will have a very good ratio for mm -hmm. climb easily. And then we have the bull, and that one looks a bit bigger, right? That's probably like a 2.5, 2.6 meter. Airplane. Yes. Yes, this 2.6 uh, windspan, 2.3 uh, fuselage. Uh, this is a sport jet completely different to uh, Ultimatum. This jet is, uh, let's say, medium slow or medium speed. <laughs> it, it is not uh, even this can fly quite fast. But this is not the idea with this model. This model is a model that can fly on uh, very good on a beginner because this uh, flying is fly like a trainer, easy, and you can go all up to 3D. So you can learn uh, a lot of jet flying with this model. And in the future, if you want, you can put a vector system on the on the turbine, and this will fly like 3D. Of course, it's not. Uh, radical 3d like uh, for example f1c from mm -hmm. pilot or yep. that kind of jet where you can you need to know very good 3d already to control such a kind of model and what is good with this model is it's not radical 3d but very nice 3d and also you can fly a sport like a pattern, a flying style, knife edge or rolls, very precise. So you have a mix of uh, flying characteristics that uh, makes uh, very, very user friendly. Yeah, no, I remember seeing some video, might have been with you flying this one and, and with Thrust Vector, it looked yeah. pretty, pretty nice and very precise too, just when you're doing like basic prison robotics, it looks, it looks really nice. Uh, and it looks yes. like it, uh, yeah, as you said, um, pretty user friendly uh, with like slow speed capabilities, right? Yes, uh, the the weight of uh, aircraft uh, uh, dry is. Uh, we have customers; uh, they are uh, flying the model dry, like thirteen kilograms, and wet is like uh, fifteen kilograms. Uh, yes, there are also uh, some models uh, up to sixteen kilograms wet, which is very light in such a 2.6 uh, windspan model is very very light normally you will find uh, let's say uh, viper jets uh, of this uh, windspan and this will weight uh, at least two more kilograms uh, so this uh, weight saving is a huge different uh, difference above all when you are making a, a slow uh, full flap passes or landing uh, any pilot who wants to get uh, inside the jet and don't know what to, to buy, uh, it is quite hard because you need first a trainer and then a sport jet and then a 3D jet. Uh, and then you, you finish with three or four models, different models. And with this model, you buy it as and you can buy as a trainer. And in the end, you can have a 3D. So I think it is very interesting. Mm -hmm. 
I haven't had a chance to see uh, Hispanavision yet in person, but I've seen some videos, both in flying, but also seen some videos of the construction. Um, I think from Jonathan from the lighter side of our city yeah. has a couple of videos yeah. on, of, of both models, I think. Uh, it looked like the quality was really, really up there too. Um, like, you know, there's, there's always like some uh, variety when you look at, at quality of components, quality of fabrication uh, of different manufacturers. And this one's definitely looked really really good like it was really cool to see this level of quality coming from spain me being spanish that was like pretty pretty cool to yeah see. yes uh the the yeah basically uh one of the of the wishes of uh owner of company was uh, use uh, good quality materials we we use uh, normally uh, german quality material uh, fiberglass epoxy carbon fiber all of this material uh, is from Germany uh, and the models are manufactured uh, here in Spain. Uh, so uh, first of all, because um, the mentality is to keep the, the weight uh, low, as low as possible. Uh, yes, you need a good quality material to get uh, low weight. Otherwise you will need uh, increase quantity of epoxy and quantity or, or grams of fiber to get enough rigidity and strength on the airframe. So if you use a good material, you can reduce some grams on it. But also uh, we focus very much on the paint in mold schemes. So this bull is like 75% painted in mold, the color scheme and uh, 25 out of mold. And this ultimatum is 95% painted inside mold. Why is this so important? For example, in a bull uh, with that wingspan, you will paint, for example, white in the mold, make the process of layup, and then you will have a, a model. And this model, you will need to paint color scheme. Color scheme, base color and clear coat will add at least 600 to 800 grams to full airframe uh, because this is quite big the ultimatum you will add like 300 400 mm -hmm. grams more okay so on the beginning these numbers doesn't sound too much but if you see that uh, this bull model kit weights like six or six and a half kilograms 800 grams is a lot of difference on the it's frame. A, it's a good chunk of the total, yeah. So if you will paint white in the mold, why not to paint color scheme in the mold and save a lot of grams on it? Mm -hmm. Yes, after you, some customers like to have a clear coat to make it more brilliant, for example. Yeah, a bit shinier, uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, this is uh, just a uh, different stuff about um, performance of airframe. Uh, for example, if you look to F3B uh, gliders, mm -hmm. which are in the top of technology of uh, composite uh, manufacturing, they paint in mold since a lot of years and them wings are the best manufactured ever. And uh, why they go in that way? Obviously because of performance. So yes, you can have a better looking model if you paint outside of mold, but this can also be very nice painted inside mold and save grams. Um, you were mentioning before how a big focus has been also on getting the weight, not just the right center of gravity by putting weight in different places, but actually getting, getting that uh, mass distribution in, in the optimal configuration for, for flying uh, characteristics. Um, I'm kind of curious, what, what are the main ways that you try to achieve that? Like, I, I feel like usually, you know, the, the turbine position is, is probably yes. a huge factor, right? Because that's one of the heaviest components, if not, yeah, it's one of the heaviest components in your, in your build. Um, what, like how, how else are you trying to approach that, that problem? Well, uh, on the. The, the first and easier way to check if uh, everything is uh, properly balanced is, uh, let's say, knife edge flying. Mm -hmm. uh, if, for example, you can put uh, batteries in the bottom of the fuselage because it is very easy to put there. 
uh, fuel tank in the bottom of the fuselage because this will sit on, in the in the bottom side. But this will not mean that uh, the mass of the model is correct on the middle when you are flying on knife edge, for example. So you can have coupling and the model will always tend to uh, return back to straight uh, normal mm -hmm. flying. Or this can be opposite if you put too much weight on the top. So on the first, on the beginning, on the on the beginning of uh, development, what we do is play a lot, like you say, with the turbine position and incidence, in order to get the the correct incidence and the exhaust system will work always the same. So if you have a half throttle or full throttle model, will stay as straight as possible. It is hard that every model will be exactly the same because each um, pilot will build with a little bit different center of gravity. So there you will need a little bit of mix, but the model should fly straight on every vertical and horizontal lines with 30% uh, of power or 85% uh, of power. This is the first point. The second point is we recommend position of components inside the aircraft. Like, for example, fuel tank can be already um, held in the fuselage on the correct position in order to prevent that some customer will assemble it on a different uh, wrong position. And this will affect the flying characteristics. Uh, electronic plate is on the place where the each design need to be done. So you will be able to play a little bit with the uh, battery's position, but battery's position is already recommended to keep all the masses on the middle of the aircraft. And this will keep the best performance of the aircraft always. If you introduce modifications, we recommend to make it as close a, uh, as where we recommend to make the things in order to keep the balance. Mm -hmm. So. All of these, uh, normally I test the aircraft as a pilot and check what is the tendency of aircraft, where is the best center of gravity point to fly, let's say, pattern and sport flying. And then from that point, I start to work on uh, places on, or uh, position of things to improve the flying and reduce as much as possible mixes and gyros gyros are great but gyros cannot or should not make something good some the aircraft should fly good by himself yeah, without you want, gyro you want the gyro to enhance the flat characteristics you don't want the gyro there as a band-aid fixing yeah. problems of the plane yeah exactly the model should fly correct straight out of the box with servos and yes, of course, I, I like the gyros. I Before I hate them, but now I love them. And uh, the gyro is great feeling, but it should not be to cover uh, mistakes on the design or uh, mistakes on the setup. Yep. We also recommend setups. So we can bring uh, throws, center of gravity, uh, everything in order to get a uh, uh, comfortable flying on the beginning, on the first flight. Makes sense. Um, one thing I wanted to also touch on shortly, probably without getting, without getting into a lot of details, because I know this stuff is usually often confidential, uh, but I know that um, Hispanavison has also been doing some work on UAVs, right, with commercial applications. Yes, uh, Hispan Aviation is a partner of uh, some UAV companies around the world not only in Spain and uh, Hispan Aviation makes uh, basically airframes for some companies to make uh, research or uh, on new technologies like uh, control lobes and stuff like this, but also investigation in a new tool for uh, aerodynamics or a tool for uh, flying measurement. So uh, we basically uh, focus on jets uh, but also there is uh, props uh, aircraft and we have a lot of background on this uh, because uh, uh, we started with UAV in uh, 2014. 
So we have background on it and uh, we can help and we can collaborate with the different companies. Yeah, it seems, it seems like more and more, especially yet RCJet companies are starting to do some of that. Like it, it makes sense. You have uh, a lot of experience that you can share within both like, you know, um, RC flying and commercial UAV applications. Uh, whatever you learn on one, you probably can bring a lot of that knowledge and skills uh, back to, to the other set of things and, and make you like a stronger company, right? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, I think that uh, by personal experience, uh, if you are an air modeler, this can be great uh, to bring your knowledge to the UAB industry and uh, be a pilot of UAB industry is great to bring that experience to RC. You can learn from both uh, worlds, let's say, mm -hmm. and they are very well connected. In fact, uh, I will say that the air modeling is a perfect uh, glue between aviation, uh, managed aviation and UAV. Mm -hmm. uh, the UAV and uh, managed aviation are not the same. They are different. Uh, they are very similar, but they are not the same. They doesn't work the same. Uh, but RC uh, aircraft, uh, have a better approach to above all to frames than uh, commercial aviation, let's say. So I think that uh, both worlds can collaborate uh, very good and uh, you can learn from both of them a lot of things. For example, from UAV, you will learn how to make a better distribution of masses on aircraft or analyze better uh, flying characteristic than if you are not in the UAV industry. And uh, if you are in the UAV industry, somebody who knows uh, about uh, such kind of aircraft, high performance aircraft, those aircraft will be great on UAV industry. Yeah. Where do you see Hispanovision five or 10 years from now? Where would you like to to, to be? I think that the Spanish aviation uh, goal or focus is uh, to be a good uh, reputation brand uh, around the world, um, trying to compete in a market who is uh, beautiful and great, and there is a great uh, brands around the world also, and trying to give uh, different models, uh, special models not um, very popular models they uh, this is not our main focus like uh, mm, popular trainer or popular uh, only top speed model no the idea is to make uh, special models mm -hmm. the um, the customers the market is learning more and more customers knows more about aerodynamic customers knows more about how a proper aircraft should fly and how a bad aircraft can fly. So customers want better uh, designed and better manufactured aircraft because they know what they want. Some years ago, customers fly what manufacturers sell. Today, customer can choose what he wants. Mm -hmm. He wants to fly something good or he wants to fly something that looks like an airplane and that's mm. it. So the idea is to, to prepare and promote models that flies very good. They are very well made with good quality and as good price as possible inside this market. This is the, the future. What I will love to have a bigger sports shed and some scale model for sure. Mm. Okay. So scale models are in the picture in the future, hopefully. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I hope, I hope, but uh, there is great brands like, uh, let's say, uh, I will say, uh, Carf, uh, Pilot, uh, mm -hmm. Skygate, uh, Tomahawk, Paritech. Mm -hmm. They are great brands. Also, other brands that are starting like uh, uh, ST Jets uh, from Argentina, uh, many uh, Chinese brands. So customers have where to, to choose. Yeah. And there is a lot of different uh, kind of models. It's definitely a pretty good time to be a modeler. There's a lot of uh, advancements in technology, a lot of companies, a lot of competition. 
uh, but it's it's really cool to see um, Hispanovision in this case like putting out the really good products uh, from Spain. It's been it's been interesting because since I came back to the U.S. Uh, over time, I've seen more and more companies um, offering RC products of like basically premium products, like like some of the top of the line yeah. RC products are actually coming from Spain. Like you have Hispano Jets, you have CM Jets. Uh, you have Electron, you have Jetmount, you have Sikoi. Uh, those yeah. are the, 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 first one, the first ones that come to mind. That's a lot of like very big uh, major companies in RC all coming from Spain. I'm kind of curious, like, do you, do you have any thoughts on why that is the case? Like that's feels unusual. Like not many countries have uh, that many big brands and especially not a country relatively small like Spain, right? Like it's not like the US yeah. or China. Uh, that yeah. have like so many people. It's it's uh, it seems unusual. Yes. Uh, well, we we should to to know that uh, the first uh, model turbine was made in Spain. Mm -hmm. So in the history, so the the first uh, turbine born here in Spain, the model turbine born here in Spain, and I think that this was a a kickoff uh, to passion in Spain a lot. Uh, this kind of uh, aircraft. Um, Gaspar uh, from Chicoy is a uh, world uh, reference in the turbines. He was also on Jet Moons. They are also a uh, world reference on the turbine uh, manufacturing. So I think that this was um, like inspirational uh, stuff for other companies to say, why not? We cannot make, for example, better landing gears. Why we should to have air leaks? and crash our models after a fantastic fly because landing gear will not deploy. Mm -hmm. So I think that Joel from Electron have a vision also about uh, how can I uh, solve this huge problem? Because we don't remember, but there for sure there is a lot of old uh, air modelers that remember like 15 years ago when you were happy while flying that turbine didn't stop mm -hmm. but you were even more happy if landing gear comes plan, out yep. before land <laughs> yep. so uh, i think that this was a great vision from uh, Joel to make this uh, electric retracts and to come the best in the market because today they are the best in the market and also they work on uav projects actually so they can offer all the RC experience, all the flying background they have to UAV industry, but UAV industry also push the level of brand higher. Yep. And Carlos also come to solve a problem with fuel tanks, uh, fuel tanks with leaks, uh, fuel tanks that doesn't have proper geometry. Uh, so Carlos think, why not to make a good fuel tank? So I think that uh, in Spain, uh, yes, this uh, we can feel very proud of the brands and the products that uh, are coming out from here. Uh, I think that it's the same like always. We have uh, very good references in Italy, in Germany and France. So Spain is doing uh, the work right, like uh, like other countries. Yeah, no, it's definitely really cool. It's really, really nice to see from, from here. Well, yes. Um, I don't want to take more of your time. I think we're already past an hour, uh, but it was super, super fun chatting with you. It's a lot of uh, cool stuff between 4D and, and all the all the work from Hispanavision. Uh, maybe we should have you back once you have the new uh, 4D model uh, ready to go. <laughs> yes, of course. If this works like I want, don't worry. You will know it immediately. Yeah, right. This will be a dream. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get there. It's just, uh, just a matter of finding the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Time, the time is too little and this is a lot of work. So I hope to don't die before make it through, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for, for uh, taking the time, Andres. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Juan. This was uh, my pleasure and uh, keep growing with uh, this beautiful channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.